Frank School, 28th day. Time out. Time out. Uh, I decided to stop uh, for a little while uh, on the story of English. Uh, I'll go back to it. There's no doubt about it. I'll go back to it, and I'm going to finish it. But we've got to the end of the third uh, episode, and that's uh, that's a place where we, we could stop. And uh, But before I do that, I say, but, uh, Robert McNeil was talking about having Harvard. Uh, where I live, we would say, park the car in Harvard Yard. Well, uh, the, one of the, it's not exactly a joke, because there's truth to it. In, in Boston area, they would say something like, pack the car in Harvard Yard. Uh, they don't do that R the way we, we do the R here uh, in, in uh, mid-Atlantic dialect, is more or less what I speak, of, of American English. All right, why the pause? Well, I've got too many other things to show you actually, and to concentrate on. At Bedford, there's a festival. It's its 50th year of fall foliage. A big festival, two weekends. I don't care much about it, really, at all. I, I don't like festivals much. But Richard McCoy's machines are there, once again. And if you wanted to search it on my site, on my uh, channel, Richard McCoy, you could find it from last year. But I've already begun to film uh, uh, things that I want to share with you. So I'm going to be putting that on. Another thing, in a, in not this weekend, but the next weekend, I've got a speech. I'm going to be giving a speech. I've got an upcoming speech, and it's going to be about open-air museums. I'm going to briefly discuss about 14 uh, or so open-air museums, and uh, the ones which make our would be more unique to Americans are the four that I saw last spring in uh, in Europe, and I've created four playlists. I wanted you to let let you know that that on this channel, if you just go to the channel, uh, this the first video, uh, whatever comes up, and you go down to to playlists, which is just scrolling down to I think, uh, there's the words Gifhorn, Detmold, Hagen, and Arnheim. Each one of them would be as long as a feature-length movie, I think. And But I, I want to tell you that they're there. I put them together. And uh, another thing, uh, and, and I did it f to be ready for this uh, speech so I could tell people, well, there, if, if you're interested, look at these. A prospectus is a look forward. And I guess I'm going to do a, another, a second perspective, prospectus for my efforts at creating a museum, the Old and Other Ways Museum. I'm going to walk around the farm. Once again, I, I think I, I don't have shame <laughs> because projects are started everywhere. So many of them are not finished, but I am absolutely gaining. And I think I'll walk around and explain what I have in mind, uh, what, what I have been trying to do and what I am trying to do. That's called a prospective. Prospectus. I'll do it as a video, uh, again for the speech, but uh, but also for the course. And then I've got a lot of batch bug projects. I've created this word batch bug, building a cheap but good, whatever. Uh, and I have a lot of them going on, and and a lot of them are season sensitive. In other words, I have to get to a certain point before the mud. And the, and the snow and the ice come. I have to sort of get off the ground onto wood and onto a level surface if I can. Well, for example, a, a chimney I'm building, uh, a, a complete with a dome, <laughs> uh, or a, a, a vault rather, a, a fountain, a bake oven, two bridges, three more buildings that I'm starting uh, related to a water wheel site, which I'm starting. Uh, I've got two men helping me some now. Uh, one man helps me maybe uh, two and a half hours, three hours a day, and the other man, uh, that's Adam, and uh, Andy helps me uh, six hours or so, I, I mean a week, uh, a week. So I have two guys helping me, so it's one of the reasons I'm getting more done. So I'll, I want to film some of that stuff and show you what I'm doing because it's fun, you can learn, and uh, it'll be a break. This is a time out. Uh, I am an English teacher, but I'm taught humanities. Uh, all right, and f finally, I want to mention the movie Far From the Matting Crowd. Uh, last night, uh, I woke up and I turned the television on 12.30, and here it was on, and I thought, oh, because I know this movie well. 1967 version with Julie Christie, Alan Bates. 
I watched the whole thing till three. It about made me sick from lack of sleeping oddly. But it is wonderful. And I mention it now partly because it's like watching a movie in an open air museum. I'm going to mention it in my speech. If that you want to hear a, a story, a, a, a you know a, a love story, uh, and have it in an open air museum, there you go. Far from the madding crowd, although it's a whole uh, area. It's not just one one spot. The other thing about far from the madding crowd is, I think. That, well, I have already. Here's a copy of it. Actually, I, I've seen a movie several times. I've read the book twice. I gave this to my neighbor. Uh, Jack Longsore, who raises sheep, I see this, I gave it to him on his birthday in 1982, and he gave it back he, after he read it. Uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm thinking about incorporating it into the course um, and, and guiding the reading, not just the viewing, but the reading of a novel. That would be so different for me, but normal for English teachers. So, but anyway, it, uh, it affected me profoundly. It came out in 1967. I would have been uh, about 23 years old then. And it shows, well, it's related to what I was saying in the background this year. I'm, I'm dealing with that question of why does the beauty fall out of the classics for me about 1875 or so? Why? What is it about me or about the world? And, uh, uh, it, it's related to that because I love that book and I love that movie and I love the world it shows, although I'm not utterly romantic about it either. Um, and it's right about that point. Uh, uh, Thomas Hardy, he, he's, he's, he's almost the last novelist uh, whom I like. <laughs> there have been so many since then, but why, you know? And... Uh, uh, so uh, later on, I'll, I'll say more about that. But I, I guess I just wanted to mention it because, uh, you know, if you um, like to watch movies, uh, it, uh, it wasn't exactly good for me in a way because, you know, now I'm, uh, what, 68 years old. Then I was 23. Uh, so much time has passed. M you know, my life is, uh, I've, I've, I've lived most of my life, and uh, I, can't, I can't explain it. And there's that movie. I mean, at, at the beginning of my life, I saw that. I was moved by it. Coming toward the end of my life, I see it. I'm moved by it. The world has changed. All right. Yeah, well, I, maybe I shouldn't have gone into that. But it affected me enough. I thought I would. All right. Uh, well, look forward to seeing some outdoor shots uh, in the next uh, few days. Bye for now.